Good afternoon, lovely people. How are you all today? I hope you're well. I hope you're all getting excited because spring is nearly here. Oh, I'm having to kind of like ah, <laughs> really hold on to not planting things yet. Actually, our weather has changed a little bit. Um, as you can probably, can you tell from the light in here? I'm not sure, but. Uh, we're suddenly a little bit more cloudy, a little bit more windy, and the temperature's definitely dropped a few degrees, but it's still really mild. We've had a couple of sprinkles of rain, we're due a couple more, which is great, because, um, yeah, we had three weeks without rain, which is a bit odd for this time of year. Anyway, before I talk about all the things I want to talk about today and do the things I want to do in the garden with you. I'm just quickly now going to take you over to my local park, which is where I went and did a quick spot of filming before I came to the shed. Um, just to update you on the adopted pear tree. <laughs> Brain's not working today. The adopted pear tree and some other bits and bobs in our local park. So let's go over there. It's been such an age that I brought you guys to my local community park. Oh, hang on, hair in the face. To um, to see how my adopted pear tree is getting on. I thought I'd come and give you a show and tell today. Obviously, it's winter, <laughs> so there's no leaves on the trees. Oh, stumbly bit. Um, so we've got—I can't remember now. I think it's five or six adopted trees and in adopting them that doesn't mean that each of the adoptive parents gets to strip any fruit that comes it just means that we get to look after that tree and make sure it stays healthy um oh sorry that's a big divot and i've got to say everyone did an amazing job last year with watering during the drought because my goodness there we are. Um, yeah, it was a mammoth, mammoth effort from everyone involved to um, to get down here at least once a week and fill up these big watering pouches. Just in case you didn't see it last time, I'll show you this kind of pouch. It's, where can I show you? There we go. That's got a zip, so it sort of folds around the tree, zips up, and then in the front here, Oh, sometimes it's a bit, a bit awkward to get to. You have to jiggle your finger in. You can see there's a bit of a gap there. So this whole thing is a massive pouch that you fill with water. It's got small holes in the bottom. And that just means that it can sort of slowly drip and soak rather than sort of watering um, on baked clay ground in one go and it just all runs off. Look at that sky today. We are still having some sunshine, but uh, literally in the last hour or so, the clouds have been gathering. But we have buds. We have budage. Yay! So last year it ended up with, oh, I can't remember what it's called. Is it rust or spot on the leaves? And I did look up to see if there's any sort of prevention cure, but Alas, no. I've just realised I'm not looking at my tree. <laughs> my tree's the one with the yellow ribbon over here. Oh well, <laughs> I love all the trees. Um, yeah, it did get some rust last year. But, oh yeah, you can see there's a ton of buds on this one too. But if I can get you close enough to have a look. You may not be able to see it. Look. Yay, tons of buds. So, Yes, hopefully they, um, well they obviously survived that drought last year with all the watering we did. There's another one, sorry I'm going around too fast there. There's one, there's another. There was a little donation that turned up on the day unexpectedly. There's one there. So yes, fingers crossed for this year that maybe we might even get some fruit to share around. Won't that be lovely if we can sit under the tree on a summer's day and, or going into autumn and pluck a little fruit off the tree. 
you know, and you look at the trees today, it's a reminder that yes, it is still winter, despite all the sunshine we've been having. All that is definitely a wintry sky, isn't it? I've just moved away from the trees for a minute because I want to show you a couple of other things. I don't know if we'll pick up because everything is so green. Oh, look, there's a bud coming. There's absolutely dozens and dozens and dozens of bulbs planted all around our little park. And this is also a community project. So this park is owned and managed by the council. Uh, but like so many other parks around the UK, I'm just going to bring you to the rosebud. Yeah, like so many other parks in the UK, we have a Friends of the Park sort of group club, if you like. Obviously, councils are, you know, incredibly strapped for cash these days. So they sort of do the bare minimum here in terms of emptying the dog poo bins, mowing the lawns and what have you. But so much else. So this, these roses in here, um, the bowls. Oh, so shrubs all of this we collectively take care of and I love it I think it's a great idea because I think the more involved folk are in their communities whether it be with their parks or community hall look at the little primulas so sweet aren't they gorgeous absolutely cute and gorgeous yeah, like I say, I think the more people are involved, then I think the more folk have a sense of ownership and are therefore more likely to look after things. That's what I hope, anyway. And it's a lovely opportunity to, to meet new people in the area. I think it's great, especially if you move to a new area. Find out, see if your park has a friends group. Especially, you know, if you're into gardening and you've moved into a flat and you have no garden, what a great way to be able to actually do a little bit of gardening, meet the people in your area, and uh, look after what's on your doorstep, as it were. Goodness, the wind's picking up. Yes, all the roses have just had a jolly good prune, so hopefully, once we get into summer, they'll be looking gorgeous again. That's our bowling green. So, right, time to go back to the shed and to get on with my own garden, never mind the community garden, back in a mo. So, as I've sort of shown and said, I really, really enjoy that sort of community part of our park. It's really lovely. And, you know, have a look in your area. Maybe you have a friends of your local park too. And if not, and if you of you are interested, why not speak to the council and ask their permission to form a friends group and maybe do some bulb planting this autumn and other bits and pieces. It's a really, really lovely way to be part of the community and to give back to the whole community. So that's the park. Now, what's on the agenda for today? Ah, so rhubarb, more leaf strimming, a couple of other bits and bobs. Um, the reason I sort of mentioned can you hear some banging my, my next door neighbours that way are having a bit of a shed sort out today um, and it's getting darker by the minute so I don't know if it's going to chop with rain it's not supposed to anyway, yes, the rhubarb that wind has kind of whipped my head into a mess and I can't think straight the rhubarb so I haven't ever had a plant myself Obviously, it's one of those plants that loads of people have, and <clears throat> once they're established, sort of three or four years down the line, they seem pretty indestructible <clears throat> from what I've seen of other people's, and from what I remember as a kid, ones we had at home. But because I was planting one at the back end of last year for the first time, and this is something I do when I do anything new, I had a little bit of a look up, a bit of a research to see what I should be doing in terms of oh, all those things like planting depth and space, care, harvest, what have you. Um, 
so much as I did with the flint corn, when I grew the flint corn for the first time two years ago, I didn't have a clue. Is it going to be like sweet corn? I'm not sure. So I went online and normally my first port of call, if I want information on something new to me, is the RHS website. So for those of you outside the UK who maybe don't know it, it's the Royal Horticultural Society. They've got a great website, it's really clear, all sorts of veggies, flowers, all sorts of plants are covered. <clears throat> um, very respected organisation. The only problem with their website is the information is quite scant. It's sort of like the bare minimum for each plant. So I think it's quite a useful place to start, but then you might have to go off and look elsewhere. So when I was looking up the flint corn, goodness, I looked all over and then eventually I found a guy in America who writes a blog, he doesn't vlog, he does writing, and he had had two years of growing it. So over the two years he'd learnt by trial and error, really. So that's the information I got for the flint corn. So back to the rhubarb. Um, <clears throat> as you've seen, I planted it. I've got some lovely new shoots coming. Yay! I know that I'm not to harvest it in this first year, let the plant get established. But what occurred to me the other day, um, I was partly thinking about does it really need to be covered now because we're not getting frosts? Obviously, I thought if I uncover it and we get the threat of some frosts, I may well just pop some fleece on it again while it's so such a little baby. Um, but I was watching a repeat of a programme I'd seen a long time ago about the rhubarb triangle in Yorkshire, where they grow forced rhubarb in these pitch black sheds with just little candles dotted around and you can almost hear the rhubarb creaking as it grows. So that's all forced rhubarb. And like I said, I'd watched this programme before, very interesting. But this time when this time when I watched it, I was kind of watching slightly more closely now that I've got my own rhubarb plant. And one of the things I'd always wondered about them being grown in the dark is where are they getting their energy from? because they're not photosynthesizing. And as they explained in this program I saw, the plants are all mature plants. I can't remember how old they said they were, maybe four or five years old. Because they're such mature plants and they have such a good root system, that's where they're getting their energy from to throw up their stalks. And as I was watching it, I had a bit of a light bulb moment and I thought, oh, where I've got mine covered I know it's not like totally dark because obviously the fleece is going to let some light through and the leaves are they're not packed on there but it did occur to me that my little baby just really doesn't have that mature root system to provide that plant with the energy to throw up its stalks so that's my rationale so it's a combination of a bit of research and then a bit of sort of just applying some logic to it and a bit of educated guesswork so I think like I say mine's not totally in the dark however I do think it's probably time to take everything off it so that those shoots can really start to unfurl and those leaves can develop and it can basically start to photosynthesize and get some energy back in from the sun and keep putting it down to those roots to develop some good roots um, after I'd watched that programme I went back online to see what I could find research wise about forcing and the age of plants etc and I couldn't get a definitive answer anywhere but it does seem like it's not wise to force a rhubarb before it's sort of three or four years old, three or four years established in your ground so I don't think I'm ever going to be interested in forcing mine. I'm not I suppose it would, de de it would depend how hungry I was at that time of year. If it's this time of year and I'm hungry, maybe I would force it. I don't think I'm ever going to force it though, but uh, definitely for this, it's first year, I'm going to uncover it and give it a little bit of light. But I'm going to keep an eye on the forecast so that if it looks like we're going to have a hard frost, I might just pop a bit of fleece over it again 
whilst it's so young and tender. Yeah, right, let's get into the garden and do some work. Just before I go out, I might as well show you how the potatoes are getting on. They're not really chitting like mad, are they? I mean, that one's coming on. I don't know whether it's just because it's not that warm in here. It's not an issue, it's not a problem in terms of planting them. That one's got a few. One down there. Um, yeah, it's maybe because it's just not quite warm enough in here for them to really start chitting away. But like I say, I'm not worried because you can plant them without chitting anyway. And where they have got their little chits, well, it's a little bit of a head start, isn't it? But I'm probably about two or three weeks away from planting them. I'm just going to keep an eye on how the weather goes over the next next couple of weeks. We look like we're still fairly mild. So I don't know whether I'll be doing it on St. Patrick's Day, 17th of March, which is one of the traditional days for doing it. Um, I've done it on St. Patrick's Day once. But it's not it's not something I overly concern myself with. I've been I'm more interested in what is the weather doing and what's it predicted to do. Because there's no point putting these lovely little things into really cold, wet, heavy soil. So they can just sit here and carry on chitting amongst themselves. <sighs> the markers anymore. I'm not going to put the fleece far away. Rhubarb. was a very pleasant uh, interruption, I suppose you would say. Um, 
from one of my friends I haven't seen for oh gosh weeks weeks now not since just into the new year so that's why I love my gardening catching up with folk and gossiping anyway let me just show you this mulch that I've done <laughs> it just takes so long but I'm hoping 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 it's worth it so as you can see some of it or oh, I need to just take my glasses off so I can see what I'm showing you no matter how many times I stream in the basket some of them end up staying pretty whole um, however there is a lot in there that's really broken down it smells it smells absolutely gorgeous um, and what I'm now thinking is this is going to go into the celeriac bed I'm thinking as we go into the summer and I can get other stuff like grass clippings and all that other stuff because a lot of this is still quite big I might even scrape it off give it another stream and then put it in my big round compost bin see if I can get it to rot down even further and then chuck it back in the autumn although I might not do any of that because I might think that sounds like far too much work but we'll see anyway time to get this spread we had a little bit of rain yesterday thank goodness because uh, I was worried about this baking in the sun and so it's sort of perfect-ish time to get the mulch on. When I emptied this bed of the celeriac and celery, I didn't do any at all. I just needed to support you. I, oh, it's going to go flying in the wind. All I did was I just forked each of the veggies out. So there's still some of their roots down there. That's fine. That's not to rot down to you. And what I've noticed is the soil is still really quite loose and friable, which is great. Yeah. Not, not the thickest of mulch, but that is what I've got and it's better than nothing. Oh, let me step this way a sec. Yeah, I had wanted to use grass clippings from um, doing some of the communal mowing but I don't know I take one day away from the garden I come back and someone's done the mowing beat me to it won't be long for that Fab. So that's another bed nearly, nearly, nearly done by way of mulch. Obviously I need more for this end and down here. And just in terms of volume, that was about half of a one ton bag. So I've done half of that bag in here. And then as I was showing in the tour video the other day, a little bit there and the end of the carrot bed. So what that tells me, <laughs> what that tells me is for future reference, I need half one ton bag for each bed, each of the small beds, which means for each of my one, two, three, four, five beds within it, I need two and a half ton bags of leaves if I want to mulch the whole lot, which means ten one ton bags if I want to mulch all four beds. Gosh, that's going to be a lot of leaves. Actually, a lot of the ones under here haven't really done anything. So when I do expose these beds as I need them, as we go into spring and I start sowing, if there are ones which really haven't done anything, probably what I'll do is give them a strim, get them into ton bags behind the shed, and then they can come out again in the autumn. But I'm hoping that these can maybe stay down. Yay, right, what's next? This has been another of those lovely days where I've actually not got much done. Um, I don't have a lot to do anyway, that's fine. But um, yeah, there have been quite a few friends around, so it's 
just time to stop and chat. Well, <laughs> as you saw earlier with that little interruption. But how lovely. It's definitely getting to that time of year where folk are returning. Uh, not everyone gardens through the winter. That's fine, don't blame them, each to their own. But it is lovely at this time of year to start to have more and more company when I'm in the garden because there are so many days through the winter when I don't see a soul. And that's all right too because I love being in the garden on my own. Uh, I like both on my own and with people. So yeah, it's just a little quickie today. I'm glad to have got that stimming done. Um, it's really good to do it, not just to obviously to do the mulch, but to get an idea of just how much I need by way of leaves for future reference. It was quite a surprise, but that's good to know. So um, I will redouble my efforts this autumn in terms of my leaf gathering. <sighs> and for now, oh, I feel like I could snooze. So I think I'm going to say cheerio to you all. I think I'm going to wend my way home. It's a bit early to start dinner, so I think I'm just going to maybe sit back for an hour on the couch with a book. Yes, that would be a lovely treat after a busy day. Well, this afternoon it's not been busy, but still, it'd be a nice treat. Anyway, I'm waffling, so I shall say cheerio to you all. Whatever you're up to, have fun doing it. And until I see you the next time, Take care of yourselves, stay well, and be kind to yourselves. <laughs>